Welcome to Too Late Who Gives a Shit, a show in which I find out about something long after its release and fumble to make a relevant video out of it to an indifferent audience. Smash that unsubscribe button. Moon Dawn is over a year old now, but I never heard anything about it until just recently. I'm not sure if it went unnoticed or if I alone just didn't notice it, but either way I'm talking about it now and you're just going to have to live with that. It's a Swiss horror game named after the real life location it takes place in, an area so small that a search will yield far more results for this indie game than the actual town. Like I mentioned with Muramasa and Blasphemous, this is another game absolutely steeped in the culture of its developer. Many of its buildings and landscapes were directly modeled from real sources, and all of the dialogue was recorded in the Romanche language. The protagonist, Curran, who's so European he wears his backpack at all times, makes charming interjections in the language as you play. Hello, Bobetta. The time period is vague, but the impression is that you're getting absorbed into an old world of wood fire stoves and sputtering trucks, and the pencil drawn style somehow amplifies that sense of age, maybe due to the black and white palette or the weathered quality the sketch paper brings. The developer printed out the UV mappings and drew textures for them over a light box, then scanned those into the game. Up close, this results in a very unique, abstracted look, but from a distance, the landscapes look deceptively realistic. There's more to the art style than just pencil textures, with the lighting and effects being very carefully balanced to make the visuals work. Certain objects were clearly darkened to a jet black that actual pencil could never reach, and certain effects cheat and go beyond what pencil alone can do in order to add more realism and depth. The visuals do have a problem with items blending into the background too much, and even large objects like pitchforks can be easy to miss. You really have to methodically search every ledge and countertop to make sure you've gotten all the pickups in a given area, or else you'll run short on supplies. A few sections are simply way too dark, and I could only manage to see what was on screen after turning out every light in the room. Playing at night in total darkness suits the game anyway, but it was pretty much a requirement to clear these areas. Those few problems aside, there's a very effective creepiness to the smeary sketchbook quality, and the abstraction makes it very easy for the visuals to disort in nightmarish ways. Just beholding the art is as big a part of the game as puzzles or anything else. It reminded me of playing Radiohead's virtual Kid A exhibit, which also heavily featured 2D art that had been scanned and animated in 3D, only this has actual gameplay holding it together. But while Moondawn's visuals can be disturbing, it doesn't feel right to label it as a pure horror game. The developer describes it as a dark fairy tale, and that definitely seems like the right way to approach the game. It's more surreal than scary, and it always feels like you're on a journey more than experiencing terror or fighting for your life. Over the course of four days, you travel higher and higher up the Alps, experiencing new challenges every step of the way. The first day is the weakest, pitting you against hay people who somehow cause damage just by looking your direction. The main option for fighting them is to use pitchforks, which break with Breath of the Wild-like fragility and are few and far between. Sneaking within stabbing range without detection is frustrating since they often snap right to you and there isn't enough cover to make a good approach. It's possible to burn them instead by igniting hay piles and luring them in, but this consumes matches, which are also in short supply. Avoiding combat altogether is possible but difficult due to how easily you can be spotted when multiple hay people are around. They're an interesting enemy design, but everything about fighting them sucks, and the only redeeming part is that you can run their asses over, Simpsons hit and run style. Get out of my way, jerk ass! Down. You're one weird looking kid, you know that? Sorry, Mr. Simpson. The game gets much better after the introduction, with enemy types that make more sense to deal with. This humble indie game even manages to come up with a stalker character more effective and frightening than Mr. X, who is nothing but a giant dumb wall that was easy. Oh, eat me! Eat me! There's even a small amount of shooting, which means that yes, the game is a candidate for gyro aim. I am legally required to disclose this. Fighting is a fairly small part of Moondawn, though. The gameplay is too varied to define it any one way. In a given moment, you might be solving puzzles, fetch questing for a list of items, sled racing, caring for a phantom goat, or joyriding in a truck that will make you sick. None of it is especially groundbreaking, but the game does have an admirable way of moving from idea to idea without ever settling into a formula. Most of Moondawn's ideas work, but there's occasionally a clumsiness to the puzzles that makes the game feel old in a different, less charming way. You often have to look at just the right spot from just the right distance to get an object to respond, which can make time-sensitive puzzles annoying. Upgrading your stats is mostly done by finding hidden pickups, but upgrading your fear resistance requires filling a pan with water at a fountain, setting it on a stove, adding coffee to it, putting a log in the box and using a match to ignite it, then closing the door and waiting for the coffee to cook before using a cup item on it and finally choosing to drink that cup from the menu. There's a logic to the puzzles, but they're always a rigid process. You have to do every step in just the right order. You get used to these things, but it definitely feels like going back to a game from a few generations ago. In between the objectives are brief scenes and flashbacks that mostly play out in the normal first-person view, Half-Life style. 
It's a simple Faustian bargain story, but it develops at a good pace and the visuals make it fascinating to follow along with. The game only lasts about six hours, even when playing at a leisurely pace, and there isn't much in the way of side content, but I prefer a game to burn bright and fast like this rather than pat itself out and start to drag. The game is very pure in that it keeps evolving through new ideas and ends the instant they run out, while its premise and atmosphere are still really engaging. The general stiffness of the puzzles and combat is its biggest weakness, but again, Moondawn isn't really about fighting or horror. It's a dark and twisted folktale, and the developer did a great job bringing that kind of story to life as a playable experience. It always feels a little dumb to reduce a video game to just a number, so I'll just say that I strongly recommend Moondawn if you're interested by what you've seen here. And for those of you who are dumb, it's 7.5. Gavin won't send me a damn Steam Deck. <laughs> 